We call it the city. Our city. Our city. Our city! And we embrace everything about it. From our iconic bridge. To our diverse cuisine. And of course, our beautiful ballpark by the bay. San Francisco in all its splendor. We are a passionate people, admiring and celebrating both innovation and individualism. Maybe that's why we fell in love with our 2010 Giants. They are, after all, a reflection of us. The crowd here in San Francisco has taken on the personality of this team. A team in its truest sense, possessing both characters <laughs> and character. Do it, Smoothie, do it, baby! Their peerless pitching staff was as eccentric as it was effective. A shutout put together by San Francisco. Their lineup, at first question, was later revamped, and in time, was surging. Swing it out, I drive! And along the way, their manager pushed all the right buttons. Bruce Bochy has made moves, and they've worked. Together, they sought to bring a World Series title to San Francisco for the first time. Oh, World Series, baby! But erasing more than a half century of hope and heartbreak would not be easy. Hey, when was the last time you got one? 1954? Before you came to California. Fittingly, they played a gut-wrenching brand of baseball. This is Giants-type baseball. Torture. But torture never felt so good. Yeah! Even when the skeptics scoffed, the Giants kept winning. They were called cast-offs and a merry band of misfits. Yeah, on the bench. <laughs> But in the end, there was just one word left to describe. Champions. Champions. Campeones. Major League Baseball Productions presents... The Giants are world champions! The 2010 World Series film. 1958 was the year the Giants crossed the country and arrived in San Francisco, welcomed warmly to the city by the bay. They came bearing gifts, a storied tradition, and iconic players. Many legends showcased their brilliance in the years that followed, but the team goal of a World Series title eluded the Giants for more than a half a century. How you feel? Good. So it stood, headed into the 2010 season. Edgar Renneria. Game-winning hit in the World Series, 1985. What? What? When was it? 97, my bad. <laughs> All joking aside, the 2010 Giants kicked off spring training with a single purpose in mind. Yeah. I think this is a group that should be able to make it into the playoffs. We want to get, you know, deep into October, and that's what our goal is, and that's what we're going to start here in spring. Let it begin. If, in fact, we are going to win and we're going to move on and get to the place where you compete at the end of the year, starting with the division, magic has to happen. And for that, you need magicians, which the Giants had in their young, homegrown starting staff, led by two-time Cy Young Award winner Tim Lincecum, who looked primed to win a third. Lincecum strikes out the side. He's got 10. Tim won his first five decisions of the season, providing the team with an early boost of confidence. Each of Tim's outings seemed like they were the stepping stone to greater success for the club. Lincecum set the bar, and the other starters aspired to reach it. When you watch Timmy, every time he's out there, you want to be like him. You want to, he push you to be better. Boy, Tim Lincecum is on tonight. It's more of an unspoken kind of competition, but you know, see if I go out there and throw a shutout, you want to go out there and do the same, but try to do it your own way. It's just all good fun for the team. It's fun to watch Barry Zito, who has just been a totally different guy since his very first start of this year. Swing on and miss, strikeout number 10 for Zito. When you have a staff that consists of two Cy Young Award winners, 
another guy who could very well win the signing award very soon. That's Matt Cain. And he's got this place into it. Everybody's standing. Right to Sanchez. A one-hit shutout for Matt Cain. And then a fourth starting pitcher who might have better raw stuff than any of them. That's Jonathan Sanchez. Got him. Ten strikeouts for Jonathan Sanchez. With this starting rotation, it seems like they could win every night. But you still need offense. And early on, the Giants were struggling to find their groove. It's the same as you. But like when you go bad, you're here and you just go bang. Yeah. But if you're good, you're going bang. By late May, the Giants were languishing near the bottom of the league in runs scored and were losing winnable games. The way this starting rotation is pitching game after game after game, that's so critical for the Giants' offense, really. Just get anything going. And on those occasions when the Giants did take a lead into the ninth inning, their dominant but dramatic closer could make things a bit hairy. Just outside, two balls in a strike. Here we go. And it's just amazing. Brian would look in the dugout sometimes uh, during the season to see if I was pacing, but I was just sitting down and pretty much say, hey, you're not going to get me this time. I guess it had to come to this, didn't it? It had to. The team wasn't scoring a lot of runs. The games that they were winning were always tight. A lot of base runners at the end. And I said, these games are torture. 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 That's what they are. They're just flat out torture. Sort of the theme of the season. I think it was a fun term to coin. I think uh, people picked up on it. Giants baseball. Torture. Giants torture. Here we go again. But it's exciting that way. Three and two. Swing and a miss. He got him. The Giants didn't care so much how they won. They just needed to win. For with June on the horizon, they continued to tread water, playing just over 500 ball. They needed a spark. And they found it when they called up their promising young catcher, Buster Posey. This isn't a, a look-see. This is a, you need to help this team out with your bat see. This is the type of an opportunity he has. The 23-year-old sees the moment, and then some. Posey swings and pulls one into left field. Another base hit. Sandoval scores. Buster Posey. Three for four. Each of his hits has knocked in a run. And these folks are loving this kid. He's been remarkable. He's been a presence in the lineup since the day he got here. High drive. Base hit. Hitting streak to 21. He's got nice discipline at the plate. He uses the whole field. He was a, just a huge shot in the arm for us. They also took a chance on slugger Pat Burrell, who had been let go by Tampa Bay. At that point, we really needed a veteran presence in the middle of the lineup. Playoff pitch from Marochnik. Posey goes, and Burrell throws it to deep left field. It is out of here. The top of the lineup also began to produce, as Andres Torres and Freddy Sanchez set the table for the sluggers who followed. There's been times where we've struggled this year and, and haven't scored a lot of runs for our pitching staff, but we feel like we play hard, we fight hard, and we can compete in every game. On the ground, Sanchez on the dive. Hey, that's the ball game. Do nothing is your final, and the Giants are off and rolling in the second half of the season. Scoring more than enough runs for their stellar starting staff, the Giants went to sizzling 20-8 and eight in the month of July. As this patchwork quilt of unique personalities began to come together, a special bond was formed. We had guys on this team that teams had given up on, teams that had either released or wavered and just let them go for nothing. And I think they looked across the clubhouse and saw somebody like them, that another team didn't want them. And in the end, it drew everybody closer and they just really loved playing with each other. The Giants have won the game in the 11. Pat Burrow, what else did you expect? Gets the job done again. You watch how they play. You watch how they win. You watch how they are resilient. They look like street fighters. We never give up. We always fight. We go to the field, get 100%, and we support each other. Andres Torres, who has been money in late-inning situations all year long, 
Once again, comes up with a big hit. All of us wanted the same thing. We wanted to win. And I think that's what brought us all that close. Never know. Never know. But that bond was tested in August when the Giants went 13 and 15, their worst month of the season. Relay by Fontenot. Got him. Game after game, manager Bruce Bochy was challenged to find the right combination. This is an easy team to second guess because we had to use the whole 25-man roster, and those aren't easy decisions, but uh, Boach pushed all the right buttons. Ozzy trying to score. He slides safely, and the Giants win with their sixth walk-off win of the year. Come September, the Giants rebounded in spectacular fashion. And even dozen for Sanchez, a career best. Starting on September 5th, the Giants allowed no more than three runs in 18 straight games. The longest such streak since 1917. Strike three call, and he will walk off the mound tall. Three of their starters, including rookie sensation Madison Bumgarner, had a September ERA below two. From that point forward, we were playing tight games and playoff type of games. Swing and a miss, he got him. It was an amazing run. They weren't going to be denied. Sometimes it comes down to how bad do you want it. And these guys really wanted it. Fittingly, the division would be determined on the last day of the regular season. There has been some major league torture here the last few days. And thanks to five shutout innings by Sanchez, the Giants put the fate of the game and their season in the hands of the major league leader in saves. This was it. You don't want to let your city down. You don't want to let your team down. I threw that final pitch, and it was chaos. The Giants are champions in the National League West. I'm not surprised it went down to the last game. This team didn't do anything easy. Let the party begin. You think it's been torture for the fans? What a relief for those guys. We busted our tails all year and, and done a great job of, of staying together and really battling back from where we were. The Giants are going to take a lap. This is their reward. We really felt if we got to the postseason, we had to pitch in to get us through it. With the first phase of their quest for a title complete, the Giants turned to the ace of that staff to set the tone for the postseason. And Lincecum was on his game. It was one of the starts where everything was working for him. He had the uh, electric fastball. Out on a fastball. It was moving, late movement in and out. Strikes out the side at five in a row. Change up was as good as it always is. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a change up in the dirt. We love the strikeout king here in San Francisco. Nine set down by Tim Lincecum. Tim would need only one run on this night, and it was provided by a man who the Giants claimed off waivers from the Florida Marlins in late August. This is a chance for Cody Ross in a big spot. The ball through into left field. They're going to wave Posey in. Here comes the throw to the plate. Not in time. And the Giants lead it one to nothing. 13 strikeouts for this. And that's a Giants postseason record. It's one strike away from another one. It's strike three. Oh, 14 strikeouts for Lisa Gump. Brilliant pitching, Jim. And the Giants take a one to nothing lead over the Braves. The other Giants pitchers followed suit throughout the series. But a big story was the ongoing emergence of Ross, who was becoming a playoff hero. Ross hits a shot to left field, going back, and it is gone for a home run. Cody Ross with a streak of lightning across the Georgia sky. What was it about that guy that the Florida Marlins did not like? When he hit that home run, you just had the sense that we would win the game. A stunning moment here. This big crowd can't believe what they just saw. On the playoffs, you need somebody to come up big. You know it's going to be difficult to score runs, and Cody had a great series. And the Giants have won the series. They keep alive their dreams of their first world championship since their move to San Francisco. The Giants are heading to Philadelphia for the National League Championship Series. But there was no brotherly love waiting for them in Philadelphia. Simply, the two-time reigning National League champions and a top three rotation that seemed second to none, led by staff ace Doc 
Halliday. Roy, obviously one of the best pitchers in the game. He had just come off of a no-hitter against the Reds, and when he has his stuff going, it, a lot of times he can go six, seven, eight innings without giving up a hit. But there was no hotter hitter on the planet than Ross. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a high fly ball, deep left field, and it continues. Cody Ross with a home run. Wow. There's your secret weapon. First hit against Halliday in the postseason is a home run. Two innings later, Cody banked another one as he continued his torrid tear. Cody Ross is hitting with an awful lot of confidence. And he shoots one into left field. You called it home run his second of the night. Two to one, San Francisco here in the fifth. Wow. Cody Ross, he should be smiling. You know, those two homers set the tone for the whole series. Behind Ross and a good outing by Lincecum, the Giants took game one and would return to San Francisco with the series tied at one apiece. What's better than a two-out base hit? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and there was simply no stopping Cody Ross. Swing a liner into left field. It's a base hit. Rattori is going to come in to score. Cody Ross, another big hit for the Giants. Fourth RBI of this series. Thanks in part to Cody and an endless stream of solid pitching, the Giants returned to Philly with the chance to close it out. And late in the tie game, Juan Uribe went yard. Back at the wall, this ball is gone. Adios, pelota! Juan Uribe has hit an opposite field home run. And with that, the San Francisco Giants lead game six in the eighth. But the Phillies weren't about to relinquish their crown without a fight. And it all came down to one pitch. Two down in the last of the night. The Giants ahead three to two. Two men on. The tension is palpable. I looked at the dugout and the guys were sweating. Boach was kind of pacing around. There's not much room for Wilson to maneuver now. And of course, we went to 3-2 because that's how dramatic it has to be. And it's this battle. Brian Wilson, Ryan Howard, who wins? So this is a huge pitch to a very dangerous hitter. And that last pitch, uh, he threw Howard. You can't throw a better pitch. Got him looking, and the Giants win the pennant. A cutter on the outside corner at the knees, and the Giants have won the National League pennant. The only noise in this park is being made out in the middle of that diamond where the Giants, who are underdogs, coming in. And they take out the Philadelphia Phillies as they head to the World Series. It was one of the greatest things that I've ever been a part of because of what our team has gone through. It was such an awesome moment to experience. The final inning of the pennant winning game was so much like the entire 2010 season. <laughs> it wasn't easy. There were moments where you could hardly breathe. And then finally, it ends. Congratulations, NLCS MVP. Cody Ross does body what this team is all about. When they handed me the trophy, it was something that you can't explain with words. I was just so happy and trying to hold back and fight back the tears. And, you know, it was a, a special moment for me. Once we did beat Philly, we put ourselves in a position, I think psychologically, with confidence. Texas, they were going to have their hands full with us. A classic matchup was indeed at hand. For San Francisco, with the Major League's best regular season earned run average, would be facing a Texas team that could boast the Major's best batting average. No team in the Majors had more hits than the Rangers. Crushed to left field. But you need more than big bats to win, even when the ballpark at Arlington is your home. Well, our ballpark has always been known as an offensive ballpark. And we felt like that uh, we needed a balanced ball club. We felt like that the pitching and defense was just as important as the offense. So the Rangers forged the third best ERA in the league, the best ranked by the club since 1983. This was the first time ever that Texas finished in the top four in both ERA and run score. Come on, Alex. Pitching and defense is our foundation. That's the foundation of any good ball club. And they sure got a boost from one of the youngest and best closers in the game, 
as Neftali Felice set a new rookie record for saves with 40. Could be the most complete Ranger team that has ever set foot in Arlington. We really started to see uh, our team turn the page. We knew that if we had strong pitching and good defense, we'd be in every game. Winning was becoming a Texas tradition, and so was fun. <laughs> and those good times gave birth to a unique celebration. You go with the claw, you know, you get a big base hit. Back up the middle and in the center field with a base hit. Antlers, you know, ball in the dirt, you take off the second base. You go first to third, you steal a bag. Molina has a chance for a triple. Unbelievable. It's just another way to have some team chemistry and uh, bring the guys closer together. Yeah. Oh, There's another formula that helps a team win. And that's to have one of the best players in the game. Josh Hamilton led his league in batting and slugging as he inspired everyone. For the first time, our team was able to see what we're capable of if everybody um, is hitting on all cylinders. Hamilton destroys one. It's going to be eight to six. The Rangers also featured a former foe in Vladimir Guerrero, who for the 10th time in his career, hit 300 with 25 home runs and 100 RBIs. Look it up, baby! He's been doing it all season long for this team. And as they fought for a postseason berth, the Rangers looked to add the one piece that would put them over the top and give them a better chance in playoff showdowns. What we needed was a number one guy, which uh, Cliff Lee gave to us. And Lee was in control. Averaging less than a walk every nine innings. Quickly, a guy that can set the tone for the entire postseason. He's been every bit as he's been built to be. AL West title flag will fly in Arlington, Texas. When we clinched, it was just a, uh, it was just a great feeling. Lee set the tone in the division series as the Rangers vanquished the AL East champion Tampa Bay Rays for the franchise's first postseason series triumph. Rangers have moved on to the American League Championship Series. But that momentum came to a grinding halt in Game 1 of the LCS when they suffered a heartbreaking loss to the Yankees. The Yankees have taken Game 1. Down 5-0. They win it 6-5. Your back's up against the wall. That's either win or go home time. And they had no intention of going home. Outscoring the Yankees 38 to 19 in the series, on their way to the Fall Classic for the first time in history. Here comes the pitch, breaking ball, straight three call. The Rangers are going to the World Series. That was a huge moment for us, winning that clinching Game Six, and knowing there was an opportunity now to win a World Championship. Pandemonium in Arlington. And it's pretty special to think that this is the first team in this team's history. Um, to win in the playoffs. Welcome to the 106th World Series, Game 1 from AT&T Park on the shores of San Francisco Bay. Beautiful day today. Can't ask for better than this, first game of the World Series. Especially if you're the newly crowned NLCS MVP who just three months ago was a virtual unknown on the streets of San Francisco. Instead, and I hope you stood, sign man. and play here for a long time. Thank you, man. I appreciate just it. Man. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, you. Thank you. So far, the spectacle is everything that you would expect of a World Series. This is something that you dream of as a kid that you, you hope. Good work. Okay. Thank you, man. Good appreciate work. it. And, you know, you hope that one day you get the opportunity, you know, to actually be here and finally get to experience this. I'm just so happy to be a part of it. There has been an amazing electricity in San Francisco for days and days in anticipation of this World Series. Everyone has Giants hats on. Giants! Giants t-shirts. I mean, it's incredible. Congratulations on the uh, MVP. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. If we can do this for them, it would be, it'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Buddy. Thanks. I just want to bring this home for the city. They deserve it, and looking forward to it. Let's, let's do it. Let's do this.
The fact that the Rangers were in town for game one meant an old friend of Giants fans had returned. Welcome back, Benji. And Benji Molina had a lot of bases to touch before the game. Hey, to you too, man. I told you you had a special group. You didn't believe me, though. Traded from the Giants to the Rangers earlier in the year, Molina was now preparing to face his former team, a most unique reunion for a man who called San Francisco home for three-plus seasons. Who would have thought, man? Wow. Amazing. I know a mix of emotions. You're facing your old brothers and friends. Bye-bye! Tommy, you got these guys doing? rolling. You all right, man? You got them rolling, man. It's always good to see you guys, man. Always. We appreciate everything you did here. No, no, thank you. Thank you. It was a, it was a weird feeling overall, but after the game starts, you kind of remember that you're playing for the other team. Batting seven and catching number 11, Benji Molina. The reception was very touching in my heart. It went very deep in my heart. It almost made me cry, man. The only reason I didn't cry is because it was like 50,000 people out there, you know, it was kind of embarrassing, so. I love that moment. I will never forget that ovation. I will never forget it. Benji would be catching one of two former Cy Young Award winners set to face off in a classic Game 1 showdown. With Game 1 of the World Series, you expect a good matchup, but this one is over the top. So far, Tim Lincecum had a postseason earned run average of 1.93, while Lee had a playoff resume for the ages. Lee in the postseason, absolutely brilliant so far. Three starts, three wins, an 0.75 ERA. When Cliff Lee pitches, I don't care who's in the bullpen, they can all go eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> this guy is filthy sick in the postseason. Runs in this game were expected to be scarce, but the Rangers had scored first inning runs in four of their six league championship series games. It was Lincecum's plan to reverse that trend. And he'll be facing Elvis Andrews. is once again on base, leading off the first inning for the Rangers. I have to imagine that there's some jitters out there. Kenny went out there uh, throwing his stuff, and it seemed like Texas had a little bit of advantage on us. It's a very big pitch early on. Runner at first base, and you got Thump on deck with Josh Hamilton. It's 3-2 count. Takes ball four, and it's two on with nobody out. Texas was following its script, though Tim did get a momentary reprieve when Hamilton grounded out, moving runners to second and third but these Rangers were relentless. Here comes Vladimir Guerrero, the Rangers' RBI leader in the regular season, hit 300. Right back up the middle off Lincecum. It kicks out into shallow right field. A run will score, and the first run of this World Series belongs to Texas. They're an aggressive team. They're going to keep up that aggressiveness. They're going to force the issue in a lot of situations, and we've just got to be, you know, be ready for whatever comes at us. So the Rangers definitely making Lincecum work here in the first inning. Bounce back toward the mound. Lincecum comes into field. He's got Young hung up. Runs it back toward third. And never makes a throw. Lincecum didn't throw the ball. Young is safe at third. Lincecum had a brain lock. Ranger went to Rhea and Juan Uribe staring at Lincecum as if to say, why don't you throw the ball? Only Tim Lincecum can explain that one. I just got outside of myself there and not really knowing the situation. I think he thought Vladimir Guerrero was coming on around and he was just going to run him back and tag both of them. It is the World Series. It's a first for a lot of us. But, uh, you know, you try to use what you've been through in those last couple of series to help you through it. And now the Rangers with a chance to turn this into a very big inning. Base is loaded, still only one out. And here is Kinsler. Oh, don't play anyway. Don't play the way cooler. We're going to bouncing ball to a rebate. He will step on third. He will throw low in the dirt. Oh, takes it out, and it's a double play to end the inning. And just like that, it is a double play. The Rangers get just the one run, an opportunity lost for Texas. In eight career postseason starts, Lee was 7-0. But in the bottom of the first, he was confronted by a former batting champion. So here's Freddie Sanchez. Broken down line drive right there. Down the right field line. Sanchez will go to second, a one-out double. Having already made a mental mistake in the field, the Giants would now suffer a momentary lapse of judgment on the base paths. Pop up back to first, 
racing out of the shadow right. Kinsler, and he reaches up and makes the catch. And now Sanchez is doubled on second. Freddy Sanchez went too far. Sanchez was almost a third and is easily doubled up at second base with the cleanup hitter coming up. So the Giants have made a couple of bonehead plays already. It didn't help that Texas pushed another run across in the second. The Giants appeared to be in trouble. It was indicative of two really bad innings by Lincecum and the Giants, and all of a sudden they're down 2-0 to Cliff Lee in game one of the World Series. I can imagine all of San Francisco sitting there thinking, oh no, we're going to get swept. It has not been a clean start to this World Series for the Giants. We were on the ropes. The game could have got out of hand early. Thank God we got out of those first two innings and, and Timmy settled down. Right to the foul line is Ross. He makes the catch. Yeah. And the inning is over. And a very quick inning for Lipscomb. Eight pitches and out. We've seen that before with Timmy. Sometimes he's a little shaky early and he settles down and starts dominating. Lincecum retires the side in order. But right through the heart. The three, four, five guys. See you later. He got his feet back on the ground. He was back to being himself and found a way to get through it. With Lincecum seemingly back on track, the Giants look to knock Lee off his. To third, Young knocks it down, picks it up, has no play. The leadoff man is on. And a little break goes the Giants' way. Trailing two to nothing, here is an opportunity for the Giants. He is hit by the pitch. 0-2 pitch up and in and hit it. But an error by Michael Young and a hit batsman. And Cliff Lee in trouble here in the bottom of the third. Now Freddie Sanchez, who's been hot. He is 10 for his last 21. I like being in those big situations. I love being in situations where the game's on the line or, or a big hit can make a difference. Sanchez has had some big moments in the playoffs. Now lead to the play. Flying into left field. Just past Michael Young. Giants are on the board. In to score, Red to ring. Torres will hold it third. It's 2-1. That was the biggest hit out of that first game. Um, you know, Freddie coming through right there. After that, the gates flew open. Now Buster Posey can really make a pay. Line drive, last hit. One run scores. It's 2-2 in the third. And all of a sudden, the Giants tie the game at 2-2. And from that moment on, they remembered how they got here. They remembered that they were a team that did all the right things. Spins, throws, Push the right buttons, play good fundamental baseball. What a pickup by your rebound. The Giants defense. Two out. Just about everything went wrong for the Giants at the outset, but now just about everything is going right. Especially their gritty at bats against Lee. That's 71 pitches in this game already for Lee. San Francisco was making Lee look human by making him work so hard. The pitch count told the story. I don't believe this is the invincible Cliff Lee here tonight. For us to have that bats and run up the pitch count and uh, find ways to get to big hits, he probably wasn't quite on top of his game. Lee did appear vulnerable. And like predators in the wild, the Giants took the opportunity to pounce. Pitch to Torres. So we get a line drive down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Torres with a one-out double. And the go-ahead run is on at second for the Giants. And Freddy Sanchez coming up. Sanchez had hit doubles in his first two World Series at bats. A third would put him in the record books. More importantly, it would give the Giants the lead. That's in the air, left center field. That's the man get down and will pick the ball. Torres scores. Sanchez in the second. And the Giants take the lead. A walk to Burl set the stage for the scintillating Cody Ross. Going against Lee, we're just trying to get him out of the game early, which is not easy to do. He's one of the best pitchers that's ever pitched in the postseason. He has looked invincible until tonight. We just kept going and kept battling and kept putting up good at bats. It ended up working out for us. Another hit. Another run. It's 5 2. Going into the playoffs, the Giants have scored the fewest amount of runs to come out and blow out Cliff Lee, uh, the most dominant pitcher uh, in the postseason. And that's it for Lee. There was almost a sense of not believing that this was the Giants that they were watching. The Giants have knocked out Lee here in the fifth inning by scoring three times. As the reality of it began to set in, there was a jubilation like I don't believe I've seen. It's something that Giants fans hadn't seen a lot during the course of the season. For us to do that kind of set the tone for the rest of the series. With Lee no longer in the picture, 
the Rangers turned to Darren O'Day to stop the bleeding. But by now, the Giants were feasting, and Juan Uribe put an end to any comeback hopes Texas might have had. Electricity in the stadium, the fans are going nuts. Juan Uribe just put this inning in the record books. Uribe gave us some breathing room that we actually needed. Six runs here for the Giants in the fifth. We put a big nail in a really big coffin, and that was all she wrote. The Giants' six-run inning was their biggest scoring World Series inning in 73 years. They went on to score 11. And all that talk of a pitcher's duel gave way to improbable chatter about the home team's offensive explosion. 11 to 7, the Giants are leading. Gosh, we put up 11 runs. It was a nice little break. Uh, the hitters had fun. Every, everything was just locked in for that game. And we couldn't have picked a better time to get locked in as a team. High uh, pop up, right field. It's going to be sure holds. Giants win game one which is, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest game in any series because now they have to win two in order to go ahead of you. They do it with the offense. We see it over and over again. You have no idea what you're going to see when you come to the party. Giants uh, won the slugfest last night, 11 to 7. San Francisco, so one game to none lead over the Rangers in the best of seven. 11 runs in game one gave the Giants good reason to be loose. That's great, man. When they do the fist, pom, 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 you got to get up on top. Yeah, oh, that's great, huh? Yeah. You gotta get the orange. Oh yeah, they all, oh yeah, yeah. Pom pom. Pom pom pom. Another electric crowd here at the ballpark. Giants fans at home have been been unbelievable. They've been great all year. It's something that definitely is a momentum shifter, and it's definitely something that pushes us for when we're out there playing on the field. But one man's pleasure can be another's pain. And in game two, the crowd would surely take aim at the Texas starter. C.J. Wilson was a reliever until this year. 33 starts, 15 wins. And here we go. Game two of the 106 World Series. Giants will turn to Matt Cain. And while Tim Lipscomb is the much more heralded of the duo, Matt Cain probably had a better year all the way around. Cain would need just 10 pitches to breeze through the first. Here's a one-two. Off the hands, good pitch. A pop-up. Long run, you Kane had yet to allow an earned run in two playoff starts, and Wilson also put up a first inning zero, with some help from his defense. To the right side, Kingsbury broke into his right, makes a good play for the out. Early returns indicated that the bats would be somewhat silent, giving way to an old-fashioned World Series pitching duel. And the pitch struck him out looking. The forecast for a low-scoring game gained credence as the night wore on, as Kane continued to stifle the Rangers' vaunted attack. With the game still scoreless in the fifth, the Rangers looked for a lift, but the Giants got a gift. Doris on the move, it hits the top of the wall and it comes back. You know, I saw it hit, and I thought it hit something behind the wall. It was a home run, so I put my head down like it was already 1-0. It's hard to believe that a ball would hit like that and come backward. When I saw that that ball was was back, I was like, wow, this is getting blessed. And I don't know how that ball came back, but things happen in baseball. 
for a reason. That night was for us. Ron Washington saying, I thought that ball was over. That close to a fifth inning lead. Kinsler never did score. And at the bottom of the fifth, the Giant, who had played more postseason games than anyone on either roster, made certain that the wall would not be a factor. for inside and, and a pool goes swinging the ball. I get lucky the ball go out, you know. <laughs> In the top of the sixth, the Rangers appeared poised to strike back when Kane was touched for a one-out hit. Line drives a base hit into left, and Michael Young is aboard in front of Josh Hamilton. The American League batting champ would do what he does best, but was contained by Cody Ross. Game deals. Swinging a shot to right field. Coming in is Cody Ross. He's going to dive. He traps it. He knocks it down in front of him, and he gets to it enough where Young stops on second. Wow, that's a big play. I realized I couldn't catch it. Had some top spin on it. At that point, you just try to knock it down and make sure um, you, know, you don't let the runners advance. And Kane was able to keep them right there by inducing a pair of pop-ups. Here's the pitch to Kinsler. Swing and a pop-up. Shallow right field. It's going to be Cody Ross. He's there. And he puts it away. And the Rangers strand a pair here in the sixth inning. Shut down inning. A blister on his finger forced Wilson to leave the game in the seventh. And with a runner on second, the Giants look to capitalize with one of their biggest producers in postseason play. Here's your rebate, runner at second, one out. And a little flare to right center field, that's a hit. Here comes Ross, two nothing Giants. Timely hitting, stellar pitching, and solid defense had Giants fans in a frenzy. And a huge ovation for Matt Cain as he departs with a two nothing lead. Kane left the game with a zero ERA in the 2010 postseason, having not allowed an earned run in 21 and a third innings. For him to throw the ball the way he did and not give up a run, uh, I can't say enough about the, the mental toughness of this guy and the stuff that he has and, and went out there against a tough lineup. Taking Kane's lead, the Giants would explode in the bottom of the eighth. The pitch to Posey. So we a line drive in the center field. And the Rangers' bullpen would implode. Here's the pitch. He walked them on four pitches. The third consecutive walk. And the Giants lead three to nothing. The Giants' four straight walks was a World Series first. And the floodgates were open. And it's low. They lost them. And the Giants lead now four to nothing. It's a two-run triple. It's eight nothing Giants in the eighth. Line drive, base hit into left. It's nine to nothing. San Francisco's 11 batter assault in the eighth did more than just put the game out of reach. And they are going crazy here, folks. It also put this suddenly hot hitting team in the record books. We took advantage. We, we start swinging the bus and go from there. Here's the pitch. Swinging a high fly ball to right. Gerholtz over. Gerholtz near the line. Action inside the ballpark created euphoria outside it. For the first time in 56 years, the Giants held a two games to none World Series lead. And their 20 runs in the first two games tied the mark for the most in World Series history. It's game three of the 2010 World Series, the first World Series game ever played here at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. 
The Rangers are down two games to none. They are badly in need of a victory. They'll have Colby Lewis on the mound tonight. The big right-hander, he has won the Rangers' last two home postseason games. He can go out there and he can shut down this Giants offense. Colby Lewis is the type of guy that can come in and win a ball game for you after you drop two in the World Series. Oh, World Series, baby. World Series. For Texas, their bats have got to wake up. And the Giants pitchers have done a remarkable job keeping them quiet. It's got some thump in it. I can feel it. I mean, no, I mean, it feels like it's when you contact it, it's got some thump in it. From the enthusiasm level, you would never know that the Rangers trail in this series two games to none. The Rangers will think it's a whole new series as they come back home. Put him in the world, whirlpool early, warm him up a little bit, get him loose. <laughs> On the way to the cage, I just dipped him in a little bit. I said, come on, buddy. Doesn't it make you feel like that kid, though? Like, you're back when you are a little kid in the backyard of your friends? In the World Series. Perfect weather. Beautiful temperatures all day long. But the wind will be a factor tonight. Well, it carries a little bit here, huh? The Giants, a team that got here with their great pitching. But they've got a pitcher tonight who... Jonathan Sanchez is sometimes an enigma who can be almost unhittable. And at other times, it's as if he's never pitched before. Hit your spots, concentrate on your spots, be okay. We are set for baseball here in game three. Nolan Ryan, likely the greatest player in Rangers franchise history. He does the honors to kick off this third game of the World Series. Giants and Rangers, game three of the 106th World Series is about to begin. 13 of the last 14 teams to trail two games to none in a World Series went on to lose the series. But these Rangers were resilient. Knowing that even though you kicked around a little bit, we're, uh, we'll bounce right back and, and come out swinging. One, two, pitch. He struck it out. Two men stranded for the Giants. It's just a situation where we don't really let a lot of stuff hurt us. We just keep fighting, keep the energy up, and keep going at them. No team in the American League had a better home batting average than the 2010 Rangers. And they fed off that comfort zone in the bottom of the second inning. First pitch from the lefty, Sanchez. One on and drilled to center. Torres going back. He's still going. It's over his head. It's off the wall. Cruz is digging for second base. And he slides in hit first with a double. You will not see a ball hit much harder than this. What a rocket off the bat of Cruz. Sanchez got the next two outs, then proceeded to walk his former teammate. Sanchez walks. His old battery mate, Benji Molina, they know each other very well. And it did look like Sanchez, after he fell behind, it looked like he really didn't want anything to do with Benji at all. Now to put runners in the corner for two out. And even in the lap of the rookie first baseman, Morgan. The Rangers had hit home runs in each of their first 11 postseason games, but had failed to go yard in their first two World Series games. That was about to change. And here's the pitch. Morgan swings it to deep right to right. Tribute, get us on the right track here in game three. It was extra special. It meant a lot. And, I mean, I, I kind of blacked out going around the bases. You know, it didn't really process till later on during the game. The Rangers finally get their first home run of the World Series. Colby Lewis had yet to lose in these playoffs, posting a 2 0 record and an ERA under two. And he continued to deal. What a good play by Retired five men in a row, and we're going to the bottom of the fifth inning, three nothing Rangers. Josh Hamilton had slugged 23 home runs in just 75 home games this year. The time had come for 24. And the 2 1 pitch swung on, high drive, well hit right center field. This one is way back, and this one is history, and makes it four to nothing, Texas. You got a guy like Josh in that lineup. They will try to put as many lefties on him um, as they possibly can. And the more he sees, the more comfortable he becomes. You make a mistake to him, he can make you pay as he did tonight. Hamilton finally gets one. This is fifth home run in postseason. Josh Hamilton with a spectacular shot, and I believe that landed in the first row of the upper deck. A tape measure home run. The Rangers now led four to nothing. 
and Lewis was holding the Giants at bay by throwing one first pitch strike after another. Lewis continued to just be a strike zone machine. But a Giants team that had scored 20 runs in its first two games would not stay scoreless for long. High fly ball in the deep left center. Back at the wall. Home run Cody Ross. And it's a 4-1 Texas lead here in the center. Here's a high drive into right field. Deep. Way back Frank Coon at the wall. He jumps. It's gone. A home run for Andre Torres. It's 4-2 Texas. That would be it for Lewis, who had pitched seven and two-thirds strong. And this crowd's going to give Colby Lewis quite an ovation as he departs. The pressure was now on the Rangers' bullpen to bring home the team's first fall classic victory. Darren O'Day is coming on to pitch to Buster Posey in a two-run ball game. Full count against a tough hitter. The next pitch would be huge. The fans have been awesome. There were people standing up out of the bullpen and they were going nuts. They are educated fans. They knew how big of an out that was. Here's the stretch. There goes Huff. The pitch. Slider reached for and bounced softly to short. In the field of Andrews. The throw to first. In time. They were pretty loud. And uh, I heard it, but I didn't want to get too caught up in it. we got four more games to go. And the inning is over. For the first time in the postseason, Texas turned to its closer for a save. The stage could not have been any bigger for a rookie reliever. They are three outs away from their first World Series win, and it is the young fireballer, Nevcali Feliz, who will come in and try and get these final three outs. And the one two pitch swung on in this ball up and away at 98 miles an hour. Me sentí preparado mentalmente y físicamente. Tenía atacar el bateador última vez, atacar de atacar la zona de try y me salió bien. He expected a good pitching duel between the two clubs at that point. Colby was masterful again, did a great job. The game lived up to its billing. Uh, the atmosphere of the crowd, and you kind of had a sense after being down 2 0, it kind of felt like we had a series going. The Giants have been beaten by the Texas Rangers, the first World Series win in Rangers history, and in this ballpark. We didn't think this would be easy, and uh, you know they played very well tonight, and uh, tomorrow hopefully uh, get back on track here with the bats. back here live at Rangers ballpark here in Arlington where the Giants and the Rangers are now just moments away from the start of game four as uh, the Rangers feel like they're right back in this World Series after their win in game three last night the Giants lead this series by the tally of two games to one Rangers rookie Mitch Moreland just 25 years old had his moment in the spotlight in game three hitting his first postseason home run now the Giants turn to their rookie, 21-year-old Madison Bumgarner, the fifth youngest pitcher to ever start a World Series game. And he was facing a team that was feasting on lefties. So far in this postseason, the Rangers have faced six left-handed starters. The ERA against the Rangers, five and a half. They've absolutely pummeled these guys. I just knew what kind of team they were and how they could hit. And I tell myself constantly just to relax. It's just another game. Just five months earlier, Bumgarner was pitching triple-A ball for Fresno. Now he was being asked to stem the Rangers' momentum before a hostile crowd in the World Series. This kid's oblivious to his surroundings. It's really amazing. He, he keeps it simple, and he relies on the people that are able to give him the information, including Buster. He's going to be the fifth youngest starter ever in the World Series. And on top of that, the Giants' battery of Buster Posey and Madison Baumgartner, the first all-rookie starting battery in a World Series game since 1947. Giants skipper Bruce Bochy took some of the attention off the Giants' young battery by changing his starting lineup. But what led him to make that move? I did it because that's how we were doing things all year. And Pat Burrow, who was not seeing the ball quite as well, and I felt like I had to make a move, I just felt that was the best team that we put out there to help us win that game. Bruce Bochy has made moves all postseason, and they've worked. There's no reason to change right now. 
The stage is set, and the 106th World Series, Game 4, is about to unfold. So Madison Bumgarner out of Hickory, North Carolina, he is ready to go to work. But Madison couldn't find the zone at the start. And on four pitches, he walked leadoff hitter Elvis Andrus. And will he be able to settle in here in the first inning? Bumgarner dealt with it like a seasoned vet. There's always a little competitive anxiety, but I try to just make pitches. I mean, that's what you got to do with a team like that. And he began to make those pitches and also got some help from his defense with one arm and Hamilton at the plate. Swinging a shot on the ground. Sanchez has got it. Spins around. Renteria for one. On to first double play. Clutch defensive plays like that had become the Giants' trademark in the postseason. But the Rangers would also flash the letter when San Francisco put men on first and third with two out and Nate Shearholtz at the plate. He swings. It's a high fly ball right center field. Josh Hamilton coming on. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. He dives. And Hamilton makes the catch. And We often hear how baseball is a game of inches. And as Andres Torres discovered in the third, those inches sometimes lead to a bounce or two that goes your way. Andres pulls one, and it hits the bag at first. Ricochets down the line, headed toward the corner. Torres speeding to second. He's going to stop there and standing with a double. For giant slugger and Texas schoolboy Aubrey Huff, this was a situation that elicited a virtual kaleidoscope of emotions. I'm thinking, if I come back home to where I've grown up watching the Rangers, loving the Rangers, idolizing Nolan Ryan, and be able to hit a big home run, that would be just like a dream come true. Look at him, Tom. Here it comes. Oh! Oh! Aubrey Huff swings, and it's a high drive. Deep right field. Down the line, and this one is gone. Holy cow. A towering home run from Aubrey. Giants. Remember the first time I hit my first big league home run? That ball is gone! It felt amazing, like you're walking on air. That's his first big league home run. But this one was way, way better. <laughs> and Aubrey Huff, back in his home area where he grew up, a Rangers fan, has hit his first World Series home run against his old favorite team. That's always good. I mean, to get an early lead like that, that helps everybody kind of relax a little bit. Madison's peaceful, easy feeling was challenged in the fourth when a leadoff single by Michael Young brought the tying run to the plate in the person of Hamilton. Bumgarner never missed a beat and was helped greatly by the slick fielding Sanchez, who seemed to be almost everywhere. He swings and hits one, ricochets off Bumgarner. Sanchez picks it up, goes to make the tag, does tag Young, throws to first, too late. What a wild play that was. He made two or three plays that I don't even think I would have even moved on. Sanchez is playing a season of second base in the first half of this game. It always helps the pitcher out when you know your defense is playing like that. Can't give them enough credit. Freddie's acrobatics in the fourth saved a hit, but Madison still had work to do. Here's Vladimir Guerrero, one out. It's the possible tying run with all of his power and hitting prowess. It's not an easy lineup for a left-hander to pitch to, especially here in Texas. And Vladimir Guerrero has been such a tremendous hitter throughout his career. It wasn't going to be an easy task for Madison to get him out. I know what kind of hitter he is. I know that he's tough to throw it by. You're not going to throw it by him. And uh, made a pretty good pitch. I'm a hanging breaking ball right here. Guerrero strikes out swinging. Oh, what a swing that was. It's, I can't remember the last time I saw him take a hack like that. That pitch just broke him down. Stymied by both defense and pitching, Texas tried to run. But Madison's rookie battery mate made it clear that there would be no easy way for the Rangers to get a runner in scoring position. Hamilton runs, the pitch taken. Here's the throw by Posey, the tag, got him! Posey guns down Josh Hamilton with a perfect, with a capital P throw. With his two-run lead still intact, Bumgarner continued to throw first pitch strikes. 21 out of 27 by game's end. His composure on the mound silenced the Texas bats 
and the ballpark. Bumgarner is taking the fun out of the crowd here tonight. This is a 21-year-old man. He just has a quiet confidence and a maniacal focus that you love from a pitcher. This kid has just been stone cold. There has been no emotion. He has just been a machine out there tonight. Very impressive. The unflappable rookie threw up zeros through six innings. Then, in the top of the seventh, Edgar Renteria enhanced his series MVP status with his third hit of the game. Up came Torres, also looking for his third hit. Renteria runs. The pitch is driven to right center field. Hamilton on the move, going back into his left. Come get it, Josh. Come on. He's not going to get it. It bounces on the track and up against the wall. Renteria coming around third. He's going to score without a throw. Into second with an RBI double is Andres Torres. And the Giants' lead is three to nothing. In the top of the eighth, the Rangers again went to their pen, calling on the side armor O'Day to face Posey, whom he had retired the day before. Buster accepted the challenge and responded. He's extremely tough on righties with that submarine arm angle. So Darren O'Day, big tall sidewinder, throws. Finally got something out over the plate, got it up in the air. Posey, it's a high fly ball, center field. Hamilton back. Hamilton still back. Hamilton at the wall. Out of here! You know, I hit it pretty good with some backspin, and I think a, a little bit of wind helped me out as well. Buster Posey, the dead center field, and it's 4 nothing Giants. I didn't think he hit it that good. That ball just kept on going. Buster's an intelligent player, and he showed it in the O'Day matchups uh, in this series. Last night, O'Day won that matchup. Tonight, Posey. Buster's probably the hands down the most talented young player I've been around. He's got that leadership ability people gravitate to. I've been in the league for 10 years and I gravitate towards him and he's a rookie. Cornerstone for this franchise for years to come. In the spirit of sportsmanship, the Texas fans who recovered the ball made certain that it got into the proper hands. There's two kids, probably 17, and Rangers fans, but said they were uh, Buster Posey fans, too. Big fan of you. Like, I'm a Rangers fan, but Thanks, you and Sam, let's go. Definitely do appreciate that from them, and glad to have that ball. But it didn't matter how many runs Bumgarner had to work with on this night. He was a machine, pitching three-hit ball with six strikeouts through eight. An unforgettable performance by a 21-year-old Madison Bumgarner. When he took him out, we really felt and believed that he would pitch a great game and give us a chance to win. And I will say uh, what he did uh, even amazed us. What a night for Madison Bumgarner. When people have asked me to describe him, since I've known him, I've said he's a competitor. And he showed that no matter what the stage is, he was going to go out and pitch his game. And he did an uh, amazing job. We talked about Lexica. We talked about Kane. We talked about Sanchez. The San Francisco Giants will be number four for long. Needing three outs to become the first team in 44 years to throw multiple shutouts in a World Series, the Giants called on Wilson to bring it home. Here's the pitch to Hamilton. Strike three cold, and that's the ball game. And the Giants take game four of this 2010 World Series. And the Giants have shut out Texas 4 to nothing in Game 4 and now lead in this World Series three games to one. We're one step closer to our ultimate goal, and that's to win a World Series. Um, we have some work left to do, and I think everybody on this club would love to bring a championship to San Francisco. Let's do it! They've never had one in San Francisco, and uh, we want to get it done for the fans. Let's go, It's a little nerve-wracking. I didn't sleep the night before because we we're on the verge of doing something we all dream about. You have the confidence, but still, you know, you're one game away, and sometimes that last game can be the toughest game. 27 outs away from a World Series championship. You know you're 27 outs away, so you're going into that game probably with a few more butterflies. They're one win away 
from their first world championship since 1954 before they left for the West Coast from New York in 58. We knew what this game was. Uh, and it wasn't we had two more games. It was, no, we can end it right now. If you think the Giants will have trouble closing this series out on the road, think again. Round one, they won it in Atlanta. Round two, they won it in Philadelphia. They go for the knockout punch here in Arlington for their first World Series championship since moving to San Francisco. It would be amazing, though, for me to do it here in front of a lot of family and friends. For me, it's been very, very stressful last month. But it's definitely been worth it so far, and I uh, hope we can get that one more and really celebrate. And so here they are, one game away from winning the World Series. A win tonight, and they can go home world champion. I've said it all along. Sometimes a franchise is just due. Cody Ross. I don't care where I had He made some good plays in Renteria and found some legs somewhere. Don't get me wrong. He can play. Yeah. He always could play. Yeah. But the past couple of years, I heard people saying that he was getting old. Well, he don't look old now. Walking down that tunnel, walking out to that game five, there was some quiet anxiety inside, knowing that it was possibly the last time that we had to walk down a tunnel for the year of 2010. It was almost like this is a walk of victory for us because we're going to figure out a way to get this done today. That was the feeling of every guy walking through that tunnel. The echo of the cleats. And you can hear the crowd. You walk down with a different type of focus. It was a warrior's mindset. And nowhere was it more acute than in the minds of the two men set to face off for the second time in this series. Each of them determined to do better. Both starting pitchers have talked about fixing their performance from game one. Cliff Lee may be a little more demonstrably so than the Giants' Tim Lincecum. Cliff Lee has got to be better tonight. How's he get it done? Well, I'm not sure how he gets it done, but he has to get it done. It's all on his shoulders tonight. The good news for the Texas Rangers is they have Cliff Lee on the mound tonight. The bad news is he was on the mound for game one. Lincecum beat him that night. No Giants pitcher had ever won four games in a single postseason. Lincecum approached the opportunity to be the first with fire in his eyes. You know, Timmy had a great look about him in that game. When he came to the dugout before he hit the mound for the first time, uh, he just said that confident look that, you know, we're used to. Tim Lincecum, Kenny, end the season for the San Francisco Giants. Once he went out there and threw the first inning, I knew he was on top of his game. And for Lincecum, it's a 1-2-3 first inning. But also knew Lee was on top of his game. Lee with a strong first inning. Gonna miss. Both those guys were on. I mean, Cliff Lee was down in the zone, moving the ball in and out. Wasn't making many mistakes. I don't think Lee had his curveball in game one. He had it in game five. Swung on and missed. Got it with a curveball. I think he's going to try to come out throwing a little bit more off-speed stuff for strikes. Last time out, he couldn't. He had to throw a lot of heaters. Cliff wasn't throwing anything straight. The cutters inside, backdoor sinkers. Got it. Strike out number five. Front door me with that sinker. Lock me up. Yeah, that one was a good one to hit. Kind of surprised me. I looked, thought he was going to go change up or breaking ball. Both of the guys were lights out. You know, Timmy was pinpointing his fastball. He was throwing his off-speed stuff. Swag and a miss, strike three. He struck him out with the changeup. Once again, is absolutely dominant. Timmy was dominant the whole way through. Boy, six wow. pitches, two strikeouts. He's moving the fastball in and out. Really devastating slider, and then the changeup's always there. Swing and a miss. There's the changeup running away. Wow. Every inning. Had to look like, you know what? I'm going to take care of business here. I felt very good about where he was at mentally. You know, we just knew it was going to be a tight game. The way Timmy's stuff was, he was neutralizing some of their big time hitters like Hamilton and, and getting them to roll over. And get those guys to roll over, you know, you feel pretty good that day about what you have. Nelson Cruz, Vladimir Guerrero, and Josh Hamilton combined in the World Series six for 42. That can't continue if they expect to play beyond game five. Between him and Cliff Lee, uh, they showed you right there why they're both two of the best pitchers in the game. I mean, there is nothing going on offensively in this ballgame. Three hits total through five innings. These two pitchers are just tearing up bats. Both of them throwing lights out in baseball, and it was, it was going to be who could scratch across the run first. The Giants thought that Buster Posey had done just that in the sixth. 
the sixth inning when Posey hit that ball. And the first pitch hit high and deep. I mean, we all said he got him. A fly ball into right well hit. I mean, we see that ball go. We also saw where it was hit. And there's a little triangle out there. And the kind of the fences go out. And Cruz was headed that way. Going back is Cruz at the warning track. And so when he caught against the wall. Just in front of the wall. He leaps and makes the catch. It was kind of frustrating because we couldn't get hits that day. And that will end the inning. And you saw Posey put his hands on his head. When it left the bat, it looked like it was gone. You know, the frustration, because we knew the hitters were scrapping for one run. Close call for Lee and the Rangers, but the Giants go down. We played five and a half in game five. San Francisco, nothing. Texas, nothing. Holy Karen today, bro. That ball's way out yesterday. It was kind of deflating, but, you know, we had a little pick-me-up the very next inning. But first, the Giants got a boost in the bottom of the sixth inning by a very tidy Tim. A seven-pitch inning for Lincecum. And their top of the seventh was kicked off by a knock from one of their key postseason catalysts. Well, we got a big hit by uh, Cody Ross. Uh, you know, two strikes, uh, ball down. Uh, he did a nice piece of hitting. Yeah, boy! And Ross is on. That is a leadoff single against Lee. And, of course, uh, Uribe had two strikes on him and got that huge base hit. That's a base hit. Ross coming to second. He's going to stop the first time that anybody's gotten to second base in this game. You got a couple base hits. You got runners on first and second. Nobody out. And, uh, you know, got Aubrey Huff up at the plate. Nobody's thinking he's going to bunt guys over. Hard to imagine Huff putting down a bunt, but he squares and he bunts it first base side. It's a good one. He might beat it out. Lee over to get it. Lee makes the flip to get him, but it's a great sacrifice. Wow. That's a nice play. Huff's first ever sacrifice bunt. What a big moment there to get a second and third with one out. Come on, let's go. Come on, Eddie. We had second and third, and when Burl struck out. Two out and a huge strikeout for Cliff Lee so close we were sitting down in the bullpen we we're like we got to put a run up right here here's the chance for the giants to get the lead Bible, let's go Bible, let's go before the game was like around 5 30 me and anchor was in the locker room he told me kid i'm gonna hit a ball out of the field i'm gonna hit a homer and i just laughed i'm gonna hit a ball out i said i believe him so now renteria can he be a giants hero again if anybody has an back for him Coming up big in the moment, uh, it was Edgar Renteria. We had the right guy up there. Edgar Renteria, he gets a base hit here, and they go up. He'll be buying for MVP. 2-0 to count. Lee pitches. When he hit it, I didn't think he hit enough of it to go out. Renteria, it's a high drive. Deep left center field. But it kept carrying and carrying. Still going back, still going back. Being an outfielder, I'm watching the outfielders converge on the ball. I knew Hamilton wasn't going to have a chance to get to it. I think Murphy was playing in left. David Murphy going back. I thought there's a possibility if it hung up a little bit, but he didn't have a beat on it. Back is Murphy on the run. And I was just hoping the ball was going to get down uh, or off the wall, score two runs. Didn't think it was going to get out. Yeah. When it cleared the fence, I kind of lost it a little bit. Yes! And that ball is gone! Edgar Renteria has hit a three-run homer! It was amazing. He hit that homer, and I was so excited. I went to roll one. Andres came running up to me and said, He told me he was going to do it! He told, he told me he was going to do it. He told me he was going to do it. He told me he was going to hit a homer before the game, man. He did it. Everybody needs it! Everybody needs it! Level, level. And the Giants take a 3 nothing lead. Just excitement of, of three runs, late in the game, three runs. You didn't want to get too excited because we respect the other team, but you felt the win. You felt it, it was over. The way Timmy was pitching, we knew we crushed them. That has stunned the Rangers. Edgar, a hero 13 years ago in his first World Series, and maybe history will repeat itself here tonight. We knew that uh, experience was important, and we knew Edgar was uh, brought here for a reason. It's not surprising what he did. You can't measure this guy's heart. You know, he's worked hard all throughout the season, even though he was hurt all the time, telling us the whole time that he was going to help us win, and he was right. The man who has had a lost two years with the Giants, but when it matters most, he has carried this team. I forget the home run. I said, if anybody was going to hit a home run, if anybody's going to hit that, I will. I'm glad it was you. I always said good things happen to good people. A guy that is homeboy, a guy that respect every teammate. He deserves it. Edgar Renteria, the Giants World Series hero, and it's 3-0 here 
The Giants are nine outs away. And for six of those outs, San Fran stayed with the man looking to become the first Giants pitcher to win two games in a single World Series since Carl Hubble back in 1933. The Cy Youngs aside, you know, the season or in fact the World Series is, is in the balance and we, we had a chance to capture the flag in that game. Uh, he just had a calmness. He had a hiccup with a Cruz home run. Nelson Cruz gets the Rangers on the board. And then had to punch out Benji to end the inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Lincecum. I think that relaxed the team. Lincecum gets his former teammate and gets himself through the seventh. The rest is history. A quick, quiet eighth inning. The Giants are three outs away from winning the World Series. We're going to the ninth. So the eighth inning ends and... Tim did a remarkable job. Of course he's going to take the ninth. That's what I'm thinking. He deserved it. He earned it. But Bochy made the decision. Those last three outs can be the toughest, and Wilson's used to getting it, and he's been throwing the ball so well. So, you know, I had made up my mind that Wilson would have the last three outs. Once those doors open, this is it. This is our chance to lock this down so we can go absolutely ballistic and throw champagne everywhere. It would be a celebration more than half a century in the making. One that would resonate throughout Giants history. So, here we go. Bottom of the ninth inning. In the ninth inning, I knew right away what was going to happen, but you don't say anything until it happened. It's a nervous time when you have to go through the heart of their order with the two-run lead. You're three outs away from winning the World Series, getting a ring, uh, all these things you dream about. It's Brian Wilson, and it's all on him. The first out is the biggest out in any closer's inning. Josh Hamilton steps up. He's got MVP locked up in my head. And I was uh, fortunate enough to get you know, a strikeout looking. Strike three call. Get that call, get that first out of the way. One down in the ninth. I think it's Vladimir, I think, to ground out on the first pitch. So now we have two outs. And the Giants, after all those years of waiting, are one out away from winning the World Series. And now I get Nelson Cruz. I got to two strikes. Strike two. Looking at the dugout, everyone's on edge. I can feel the electricity in the crowd. And I'm going to throw my best slider of the year right now. If he hits a home run, whatever, get the next guy. And he swung through it. They called strike three. The dream started. For the first time in 52 years, the Giants are world champions. Yes! Woo! Damn it, what have done? San Francisco was the champion of the baseball world. Even when we're on the field celebrating, it, it didn't feel real. World Series champ. Oh, there you go. World right Series up. champ. Well, such a pleasure doing it, my brother. When you win with a team effort, 25 guys, everybody's pulling on the same end of the rope, it means something. It's special. The first championship for this organization since they moved west in 1958. We understand what we've done for the entire city and for the ex-players that are still around the team. I had tears in my eyes for the guys, the way they played the whole year round. It was just a wonderful feeling to see them have the emotion that they have. I smell something. You smell something. <laughs> it's grape juice. Ow. It's grape juice. Grape juice. Uh, bottles. Just for the camera, Champions World Series, do it to myself. Ah! Congratulations to Edgar Renteria, the most valuable player in the 2010 World Series. Congratulations. It was just awesome. You just sat there very thankful for what just took place. Not even having any idea what's about to take place. What unfolded later that night in the city by the bay was a spontaneous outburst of triumphant joy by Giants fans as their champions returned home. It's a very 
brings tears to your eyes. This city is just incredible. How they feel about the Giants and how we feel about the city. Oh, I mean, this is what we play for. This is why we're here. I mean, it's 4 o'clock in the morning and these people are out here. This is awesome. We did it. The torch is finally over, baby. The torch is over, baby. Giant baseball. There was no World Series hangover in San Francisco. In fact, the celebration was just beginning in the city. For the first time in the lifetime of many of these fans, they got to feel the joy of being on top. They've been in the World Series before this, but they've never been champions before. So it was very, very exciting to be a part of what was going on for the day. Never before had these devoted fans experienced the thrill of a World Series parade, one that seemed like it would go on forever. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I mean, this is obviously super anticipation. You know, we're, we're ready to get this thing fired up. And not just any parade, our parade. We try to imagine it, but no, this is something totally overwhelming. I mean, this is awesome. I expected, you know, obviously a good turnout and people going nuts, but I couldn't anticipate the feeling that I had in my body. This is amazing. This is so good. There was this huge wave of electricity. There was this wave of emotion. They honestly loved every minute of what was going on at that point. They come in day in, day out, giving us support. So, I mean, here they are right now again. So, I mean, take a look for yourself. This colorful team, headlined by an extraordinary pitching staff, brought a joy to this city that it had never known. You guys have waited so long for this, and we brought it home for you guys. Thank you guys. Y'all are the best. And now those fans could shout the one word that only they could say. Champions. Champions. Our champions.